Barnsley in South Yorkshire, once the bustling centre of Britain's coal industry. The kind of place the Labour heartland cliché was invented for. But in 2011, a tremor was felt. Jarvis Dan, 14,724. As expected, Labour won the Barnsley Central by-election, but UKIP came second for the first time in a Westminster vote. At the time, it was dismissed as a few Tories having a flutter with the Purple Party. They were wrong, and Labour would pay for their complacency. For Labour in the north of England, Barnsley was the canary in the mine, the place where UKIP first started performing well in a seat previously dismissed as rock solid. And it happened here, the home of Arthur Scargill, the place that's obediently returned a Labour MP in every election since 1935. So what on earth is happening? Barnsley's forgotten. In, uh, oh, I don't know. No, no, that's, that's really interesting, though. It is yeah. interesting. Yeah. So you feel that politicians in Westminster are... Uh, forgetting Barnsley people, yeah. I think there needs to be more input into it. Yeah. Um, I mean, one t- it used to be a thriving town. Look at it now. Factories or what you call industry, it was all you could get a job anywhere. It was all over. Where is it now? Is it? No, no manufacturing, nothing. So what, what did you what did you have done? As, did you work in manufacturing in Barnsley? Or did you... I did for 37 years for the same company as William Freeman's. Yeah. It, it was yeah. a rubber factory. And we supplied basically anything in rubber and plastic to all over the world. I left school, it was always a job that you could, could have. And now there's, there's no work for anybody. Things are shut in and, you know, people have they're just on red line all the time. Mm. I'm not so keen of the uh, leader they've got now, but I've, all, I've always voted it. Voted. What, why aren't you so keen on the leader? Well, it's, uh, I don't, he don't know what he's really doing. At the moment, I'm not very happy with the Labour Party. Uh, the infighting is, um, is a bit too much. I think they've got a newly elected leader. They should all get behind him. Mm at this stage and give him a chance. Mm. We're just asking people's views, really, on the Labour Party. You've got anything? <laughs> Better not. <laughs> the decline of industry has not only left its mark on the landscape, but the people. More than one in five children here are living in poverty, and it's hard to get out. Barnsley Central is the second worst constituency in the country for social mobility. In wards like St Helens, you can understand why people are angry. Child poverty here is double the national average. Long-term unemployment, more than double. But if Labour want to change that, they need to be in power first. It's a fact not lost on the local MP on a visit to Darton College to promote his child poverty bill. What are the big issues that you're concerned about? What are the big challenges you think that, that you face growing up and at some point entering into the world of work? We need to work on noticing child poverty and maybe, maybe educating people how to get themselves out of that situation, yeah. if that is possible. This week, Dan Jarvis will introduce a private member's bill to try and force the government to put a new child poverty target in place after they scrapped the old one. It's about ensuring that where you grow up doesn't determine where you end up. And I listened very carefully to what the Prime Minister said when she stood on the steps of Downing Street and she said that she was going to fight burning injustices and I think it's a burning injustice that now nearly four million children grow up in poverty. It's a burning injustice that that makes it much harder for them to get the best possible education and a burning injustice that it makes it much harder for them to go on and lead fulfilling challenging professional careers. And my bill, my private member's bill which I'll be introducing to Parliament next week, seeks to do something practically about that. It's not a contentious measure I don't think, it's something that the previous Prime Minister David Cameron was able to support and I hope that we can work together, establish a cross-party consensus to say it isn't acceptable in 2017 that we've got four million children growing up in poverty. Well, in Barnsley, I think about one in five children are said to be growing up in poverty. What does that actually mean for a child to be growing up in poverty? It means that it's much harder for them to get on in life. My great frustration with our country is that we've got huge potential. Our people are amazing. I'm always inspired when I come to places like this school to meet the children, to talk about the aspiration and the ambition that they have. But if you are growing up in poverty, it's much harder to do well at school. You don't have the same life opportunities. And let's be very clear, the kind of people that we are talking about are those people that the Prime Minister referred to 
as the just managing. Often the kids that we're talking about who are growing up in poverty have parents who are in full-time work. These are people who are doing the right thing, who are working hard, but at the end of each month are struggling to make ends meet. The slight issue with what you're saying, though, is that Labour can only do anything about this if they're in power. Yeah. And if you look at the polls now, right now, it looks like Labour are unelectable. We've lost two general elections and we've lost them quite badly. And I want to make sure that we don't lose another one. So all of us who believe in the value of Labour politics to achieve meaningful good for communities like Barnsley, but around the country as well, have an absolute responsibility to get involved, to think long and hard about why it was that the public didn't feel that they could trust us previously and to do the hard work that you have to do in, in opposition. If the polls don't improve, should Jeremy Corbyn be considering his position? I think that we face a very significant challenge and polls are bad, they, they're good, they sort of they blow in the wind. We've lost two general elections, none of us want to lose a third one. The leader in the end has to take responsibility for the direction of travel and the level of progress that we are making. I'm not sure it's helpful for me to kind of get into a running commentary about how, how well that's going. Do you think that he'd make a good Prime Minister? Politics is so complex, it's so fluid. If we'd sat here two years ago discussing Britain leaving the European Union, a President Trump in the White House, David Cameron standing down as the Prime Minister, these would all have come as sort of huge surprises. So I think Jer Jeremy Corbyn has developed his, his durability. He's won now twice and been elected as the leader of the Labour Party. And on that basis, he deserves our loyalty and our respect. And he also deserves all of us to get involved and to support the work that he's doing to come up with this analysis of the, of the challenges that the, that the country faces. So in the end, it's not whether I think he'd make, make a good Prime Minister or it's, it's about the public. They get to decide and actually I think they're very canny at making the decision. And we've got to convince them that when it comes to the big issues like national security, like keeping the country safe and making those really, really dif difficult decisions about the economy and safeguarding the public finances, can they place their faith and trust in him? And if he can convince them that he can, then that's a great thing and that we'll be in a strong position to win. And we need to support him in that process. But none of us should underestimate how difficult that is going to be. So Jeremy Corbyn, the man who's rebelled over 400 times against his own party's whip, is now imposing a three-line whip on his own MPs over Article 50. Mm. Is that the right thing to do? I think Jeremy is right on this. This is the biggest challenge that our country faces and it is right that as a Labour Party we come together, we establish a consensus amongst ourselves. So I, I think it is the right decision. I absolutely acknowledge that for many colleagues that will present a massive choice that they have to make. In the end I'm sure people will vote with their conscience and do what they think is the right thing for their constituencies and for their constituents. But on such a major issue such as this, I, th I think it is the right thing for the leader to, to take a view and to ensure that, that colleagues, to an extent, are bound by that decision. And are you voting for Article 50 or Southam? Yeah, I think I've listened very carefully to what people have said here in my constituency. 70% of my constituents voted to leave the European Union. I think it is the right thing to do to trigger Article 50 and we begin that process of negotiation. But what I'll be doing throughout that process is scrutinising the, the government and the actions that they take and, and seeking to ensure that we secure the best possible deal for my constituents here in Yorkshire. They voted to leave the European Union, but nobody voted to be poorer. You say it's important for Labour to show that you're understanding people's concerns. So what's the party's policy now on, on immigration? Well, I think the, the party's policy on immigration is do two things. Firstly, absolutely to recognise the benefits. We are economically better off because people come here from within the European Union and from other parts of the world to make an economic and a social and a cultural contribution. So it is, it is to understand the benefits, but it is also to recognise the concerns. And as a party, we can never afford, never afford to look like we don't understand the concerns that millions of people do you think, around Do you there. think you risk looking like that, that you don't understand the yes, concerns? Yes, I, I do think that for too long, in the previous parliament and in this one as well, we have run the risk of demonstrating to people that we don't understand the concerns that they have. It isn't racist to have concerns about the impact that migration has on our country. And we need to demonstrate that we're listening to those people who do have genuine concerns, who do believe that immigration could be managed more effectively in the interest of our country. We have to demonstrate to them that we're listening and that we take their concerns uh, very seriously. You've clearly spent quite a lot of time thinking about the future of Labour, the issues like child poverty that you feel very passionately about. 
Do you ever look back and think, I wish I'd run for Labour leader when I had the chance? I, I, I don't think back. I don't think back to that moment very often because I'm sort of quite busy looking forward. It's quite a tough time to be in politics. I'm really sad that a couple of my Labour colleagues have stood down, but I don't think this is the time to stand down. I think it's the time, frankly, to step up. You know, there are huge challenges that we all face. It could be quite hard going, but the truth of the matter is serving in politics is a great privilege.